Hi there, I'm Arnaud from Creation Arts. This is the LP Colorizer tutorial video number two. If you followed the first video, you should now have the application ready. I'm going to take you on a tour of the interface. I'm going to explain what everybody does and how to navigate through the app. There are three main sections in Colorizer. At the bottom, we have this big context area that displays by default the orange window of Logic. It displays Logic Pro graphics elements that you can select and edit on the fly. And just above, you have this section that lists all the Logic windows that you can edit. You can scroll this list from side to side. Let's select another window. And maybe I did this. OK. It's just an example of how you can go about making manual color changes. You can also change the styling of the pan knobs, like so. You would first pick a custom style from this list. And then you can also edit there the colors of the knob you selected. I'll go more in depth about this feature in the next video, the tutorial number three, that's about the color editor. And similarly, you can also do this with the faders. By the way, if you have requests or ideas for other elements that could use a different style, do send us an email about it. We are always interested to know what our users want. OK, so now we're just left with the top section. So to the left, you have your theme selector. So if we twirl open this theme selector, we see different categories. Default is Logic's original look. It cannot be edited. So at any time, if you want to go back to Logic's original look, you just apply the default theme. In Bundle, there is all the theme that comes with the app when you buy a license. And in User, you will find all the themes you created yourself from the ground up. Oh, and if you see this rainbow disk next to the team name, it is actually saying this theme is currently applied to Logic. You can also see this to the top left icon here. You can see the icon is different, right? Next to the right of the theme selector is this plus button. It's to create a new theme. When you create a new theme, it starts with the Logic's default colors. So if you want to start with something different, select a theme that maybe you like, you want to start with, and use the other button, the next button, that is the duplicate button. If you duplicate that, and now you start with a the theme that you selected. And here's a piece of advice. If you like a theme, but you want to change it, I mean a bundle theme, do not edit a bundle theme. Duplicate it. So you keep the original bundle theme as a backup in case you want to come back to it later. And I can also rename the theme that's selected and also delete it with a trash bin icon. Next is this little storefront icon. This button takes you to the theme store. If you want to buy other themes that are not available in the bundle, you can go to the theme store and buy extra themes. These themes are made from other users, not by us. And you can also sell yours. So if you are interested in that, I'll make another video actually uh, called Selling on the Theme Store. It's going to be, I think, tutorial number seven. So if you're keen on selling your own themes, you should check this video. Proceed with caution with the next button because this one will get you back to square one. If you've duplicated a theme, it will get you back to the default look of Logic. So you wipe out all your changes and you will have to start all over again. So I'll show you. Let's make a change here. And now I click the button and boom, all right? The next two buttons is to import and export themes, theme files. So if you buy a theme on the store, remember, after you purchased, you will get a file, the file of the theme, you will still need to import that file into LP Colorizer. If you want to sell your themes in the same way, you will have to export it so you can upload it to the website. And for the record, the theme files, they're just 60 kilobytes. So you can have an extensive collection of themes. Really doesn't really take any space on your computer. Okay, so we are nearing the end. Next, these two buttons control how the graphic elements are presented in the bottom view. So you can switch from the virtual display, like so, to a tree view, which is a list like this. One of the cool thing about the list view is that you can filter elements by name and colors. 
I'll make a separate video as well to show you how to use the color search to edit color in batch because it's very powerful. Same thing for the next two features. This is the logic palette editor and the orange grid editor. I don't want to go too much in detail in this video. So I'll address those two later in another video. If these videos are ready, I'll put the link in the description, but I think it should be tutorial number four and five. Next to the right side, you'll see your user and license name. And finally, the colorize button. The colorize button is to apply your changes to logic. It's very important. Every changes you make here, they are not automatically applied to logic. It's not automatic. You need to press that button to pull the changes to logic. Okay. And that's pretty much it uh, for this broad overview of the interface. This should be enough to get you started, but please do check the next videos. As I said, there are some hidden features that we need to talk about. And I didn't cover that uh, on purpose because otherwise this video would be too extensive. But please subscribe also to the channel so you'll get a notification. If those videos are not ready yet, then you'll know when they are. That's for the broad overview of the interface of LP Colorizer. I hope to see you in the next video and take care.